Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to some more Zero Hour. Welcome back to another 1v1 Pro Hole set. This is going to be a best of 13. But you've probably seen from the length of this video, it is a very short one. That's because we seem to have a very weird um, and unique set, which is a no eco only USA versus tank set between Excal and Vivid. Now, I actually started like to try to avoid casting whole sets nowadays because it just takes so many hours to commentate for four hours and then render it and all that lot. So I try to stick to just epic replays. But when a set between Excel and Vivid takes place, you kind of do want to do the whole set, but especially if it's only an hour or so of high-level no-eco games, <laughs> then I am more than interested to see who is going to be the victor here today. Because Excal's uh, micro is really, really insane, especially when he's controlling these fully loaded Vs. He's like the king of doing a no eco. So uh, maybe apart from <laughs> maybe Fargo's the king of no eco. I don't know. But a no eco basically is when you're USA as the uh, purple, which Excal is in the top. You're going for two full Vs and one ambulance. The Vs are full of missile defenders. You rush them out as fast as possible and you get across the map as fast as possible. Meanwhile, uh, the best army to do this against is the tank, of which Vivid has already messed up his build slightly because his... Uh... Oh, are they not moving anyway? Oh, they're not moving anyway. He's got a perfect perfect wonky supply. And basically, you know that a no eco is coming, which is the two full Vs, so you try and set up a defensive uh, uh, posture for it. I think going anything other than double war factory is a bad idea. I think double war factory, outpost... And the GAT is the best thing to do. And Excal is sending both doses to the supply areas here of Vivid. So what I've seen players are doing nowadays is they're going over here and then they're building a Patriot here. Because if the tank sticks with just GATs to combat the Vs, then these doses will be able to get up a Patriot. Unless they're heavily focused by all the GATs. But in that case, then the Vs are going to come in and wreck everything. So... Yeah, what you're seeing is both dozers get waypointed around. It forces the tank to make uh, outposts. So, Excal, as far as things go, has not actually got a hell of a lot done here. He's picked off a few units here and there, but Vivid is uh, still economically intact. And he's now also got him a bunch of... Uh, Tank Hunters out, which are generally really good against these, and they've uh, picked off the ambulance here. Excal's going to suicide his ambulance. Goes down, though, without creating the explosion. Excal losing HP on one of the Vs here. So Excal really going all in, but that's the whole idea of this, is to go all in. And I think it is imbalanced. It is hard for the tank. I think more often than not, the USA is winning. But I think as far as things go, Vivid is doing really well here. And I think the timer is on because Excal has seen that the propaganda center is on the way. As soon as it's uh, producing ECMs from the war factory, the timer really is on. Because just one ECM inside of this army is deadly for these Vs. The Vs still have the maneuverability. The speed and the DPS. However, they can quickly get shut down by an army of GATs and ECMs. And Vivid really is building up the, uh, the quite some army now. The prop is finished as well. So if there's an ECM coming out, then uh, this could be the death of Excal actually. Because also a GAT going to enter his base. Excal is completely all in just on uh, one supply. I think that's looking pretty over for Excal, actually. Because the ECMs are out now. There's two ECMs. I'm struggling to see a way that Excal can get in and do anything. The outpost here. Going to combat the Crusader. One of the Vs gets picked off by the ECM army. Excal, meanwhile, trying to defend back at home. But one more V gets picked off. And another V. Yeah, well done by Vivid. I think that's uh, I think that's his game in the bag. Winning with the tank there to kick things off. A lot of people consider this strat of the no eco 
what, two full Vs straight across the map with Crusaders. Consider it lame. But it is a big part of Zira because if you want to get a win nice and easy against the, against the tank, generally that's what you do. But yeah, someone will have to analyze that replay and find out why Exgal lost. Was he maybe not aggressive enough? Did he go to the wrong side? Did he... Uh, should he have gone to the right and hit the trucks there? But actually, I just thought <laughs> Vivid did really well. And that map is kind of long. You've got a bit of time before the Vs rock up. But I still think advantage uh, should be for the USA. Okay, jumping into the next one then. We shall see if Xgal is also able to win in a tank. Down in the south position, we have Xgal with a China tank in the purple. And then up in the north position, we have the USA vanilla for the green player. That is Vivid. So I think it's going to be more or less exactly the same setup as what we just saw. Will Vivid go in a different direction with his fully loaded V? Will he go over to the left? Will he go over to the right? We are going to see different maps today. It's not just going to be uh, all played on Vendetta. So not to panic. It's not going to be too samey. I do think that that uh, supply though for Vivid should be over here though. Collecting on the different crates. I think that can speed up your economy as the US. So there's no waiting because there's a second or two when that Chinook has to wait to collect. Maybe because he's done it so far distance, so maybe there is not much waiting. Maybe a second. Okay, Vivid is going to load up his first V. Excal making a barracks, one war factory, opting for a fast propaganda. So mixing it up here, he knows... The no eco is coming, so he's uh, going to bunker off this right side. First full V is on the way. I don't know whether this is the right strategy from Excal, honestly. Which is rare for me to say. Because I think when that next V... Ooh, the micro from Vivid. Why is he going way back there? He was going to go and try and stop that. I don't know why he didn't just stay there and just pick off these units and, and kill that war factory. I think that would be a win. I think losing your first full V like that, I think that's over now for Vivid. A little bit strange here. He's kind of panicking. He was going around trying to pick off this dozer. Arguable whether he would have even got it anyway because it was nicely tucked behind there. But now the ECMs are going to be coming out and one V and an Ambo is not going to be getting a lot done. Also, that doze is not going to be able to do anything. Yeah, ECM is out. Two ECMs out. ECM locks down the V, but the V does continue to move, actually. Vivid brings in his next V. Okay, he's building up the numbers again, Vivid. And Excal, even though he's got Gat's ECMs out, because he's only on one war factory, it's not a massive army like we saw in the pa in the previous game. Vivid now making a run around the back. Both trucks there picked off. Excal chasing this V army. Only one ECM in the mix. V's are going to hang around here and actually hit this war factory. Ooh, he didn't get it though. I think, uh, yeah, that's Excal's last dozer. There's only one tank hunter in there, so Vivid might just feel he can just push that. He's not actually going back. Very surprised Vivid has found himself in this situation, considering he lost that first full V. Very, very interesting. This, is there two tank hunters in there now? Yeah, two actually. I thought there was still one. But Vivid's still collected on uh, one supply. And, uh, yeah, bringing more and more Vs. He's got a Crusader on the way. Excal is building up these GAN ECM numbers. Ambulance is dead. I think that needs the repair drone and needs to go back now. One of the Vs here might get locked down. It does, but it's going to escape. No, wait. The ambulance is blocking it. Oh, wow. That's crazy. The ambulance will finally get picked off. And aggression from Vivid on the other side now. 
It could start a 2 0 here for Vivid, which would be massive. Yeah, Vivid's pulling Exgal from left to right. And that Crusader is very, very tanky, as you would imagine. So it takes a lot of DPS. Or a lot of time for the Gats to, to dish out the damage. Because the Gatling damage doesn't really damage it that much. And the Crusader. Excal's forced to sell this supply. He's uh, moving out with the Gats, trying to lock onto this V. Crusader continues to push for Vivid. One of the Vs there gets picked off, but there's uh, more and more Crusaders. Excal locks down. Oh, it's a Crusader, not a V. See how long that takes to kill. Here comes an outpost of Excal. Both Chinooks are dead, so Vivid is fully committed now with whatever he has on the battlefield. It's highly unlikely he's going to be able to um, get oils or whatever and build more. He's fully committed here to this no ego. Excal just has to pick off what he can now because Vivid is completely all in. Uh, I suppose he does have 1300 though. He could build another Chinook if he wanted to. Crusader's coming in from the left. Excal's army is getting weaker and weaker. Power is just rebuilt, but the uh, Dozer is about to get picked off. I think Vivid might have done it, which is unbelievable. I don't know how he lost his first full V and then still able to take down Excal. Yeah, any damage done to Excal's buildings now will not be able to be repaired. He's got no dozer. If he's going to pick off the last stroke, Excal's out of cash now. The uh, tank ends there got picked off, which now means the Crusaders might be able to dish out some damage, but both ECMs are locked on. But they're going to have to stay locked on. Ooh, they switch targets and he grabs the V. That's insane. That is insane. I think x done it. That's really <laughs> mental. That game was like a roller coaster. For such a simple format and the uh, setup of you have to go and no eco, you would think it would be samey, 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 and you'd know the winner straight away. But actually, that game there was like a, like a roller coaster, honestly. Okay, jumping into the next one. We've got Excal with a China tank up at the top with the purple. Or on the map, Dralim Desert. And then down in the bottom left, we have the USA Vanilla for the green player. This is Vivid. So I was going to say, let's have a look at what build order Vivid is doing. But uh, we know it. <laughs> There's no point, me, no point me having a look. But Excal is opting for this War Factory Barracks. Same as the uh, previous game. We'll see how this works out for him. If I saw that, if I was the USA and doing the no eco and I saw that setup, 
I would be kind of happy. Cause I, I think um, the, the 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 two or three Vs that get fully loaded and, and the ambulance can just eventually come here, pick off the power, pick off what few units there are, and then close down the war factory. But I think Exile is doing this to try and stop the Dozer from coming in and building a uh, Patriot. So first V picks off the outpost. Dozer is just dead. V taking a little bit of damage there, but uh, it's kind of living on the edge. Moves back just in time. Needs to be careful because the guy is right there. Another fully loaded V comes in. Vivid. And it's just because of the few units out for Excal. I think actually Vivid's in a really good position. This is how I thought the previous game would have turned out. You can either just pick off that and then he's got no production, or you can pick off the power and then and then go for that. ECM is out. But ECM without gas is not the greatest. Vivid continues to press. Propaganda now going to get picked off. These are getting veteran sealed inside of here for every kill they're getting. ECM locks down one of the Vs. It should be able to escape in time. That V goes awfully close to the ECM and it kills itself. Excal makes a gap, but I don't think these Vs can be stopped, especially now it gets Vet 2. It's going to require Vivid to make quite a big mistake. Yeah, GG. That's honestly how I thought the first game would go, but is it... A closer distance between the bases there on that map on Dralen Desert. I'm not entirely sure. I'd have to get the measuring stick out and check. Okay, jumping into the next one. We've got Dralen Desert as the map. And down in the bottom left, we have the USA Vanilla for the purple, which is Excal. Up in the north position with the China tank in the green. This is Vivid. So, Excal's doing his uh, Noiko a little bit deeper inside of his base. I think Vivid's was more in this region. You got a $100 crate, I believe it is, on this. We'll do a check in a second, actually, how much that is. Uh, $200, actually. Okay, that's quite... Um Don't know if it uh, helps you get your Noiko out a tiny little bit faster. Maybe it does. Okay, first full V is loaded and coming out straight across the map. Excal's bringing the dozer as well. One dozer going to stay in the base though. Vivid opted for the one war factory, one barracks build, but then he's gone for bunkers and four tank hunters. So looking pretty, uh, pretty decent for Vivid. Vivid's a bit of a uh, beast. For anyone who hasn't realised, is a bit of a beast. One guy sneaking out. That's going to keep Excal busy. So Vivid's got like six tank hunters out. I think it would be useful if they all get together and get the horde bonus. I believe you get a speed a speed bonus when you get the horde bonus as well. Excal trying to pick off that power, but so far not really able to break through or get anything done. And Vivid's already on a prop. Vivid really is a, a strategic genius. He's completely held this back. Of Excal for now. These six tank hunters. Now the first ECM's out. So, uh, and now he's building an airfield. He's going to be getting mixed. 
Excal just doesn't have an answer. He's not able to get in. Yeah, 1v's picked off. Vivid's now on an oil. <laughs> Lotus is going to go and try and capture another oil. I don't know if Excal... Oh, Excal is able to uh, build up his base and continue the game. He has to start with an Oeko, maybe is the rule. But he wasn't able to get anything done, so now he's had to settle into a, uh, into a normal game. Uh, so Vivid's held the Noeco, probably going to get two oils, probably going to have Napalm Migs very soon. It's about as perfect as you can play the tank, I think. So Excal knows there's probably Migs coming, eventually. The top left oil. It's going to get picked off. Excal occupies the building. Vivid's going to use that opportunity to move out. There's a few fire bases dropped around though. Vivid's going to move to this left side and engage. Oh, he's got two gats stacked on top of each other there, so he took double damage. Not the best engage there by Vivid. Not great at all, actually. He doesn't get anything done whatsoever. I think them gats might have been better not being stacked on top of each other and also just going down that path, like hugging the barracks as much as possible, trying to get yourself tucked behind here. I think that could have caused a lot more problems. I think get Vivid just gifted his main army then to Excal. Napalm Migs are up, though. That's going to get a lot more difficult for Excal. Excal knows this, though. Because the, the drone is over the mix, so he knows what's coming. Well, Missile Defender picks off a truck. Migs come in, kill two Vs. Search and Destroy is now deployed. Excal has got a lot of um, empty Vs, it seems, at the minute. Someone injured? We can take care of you. Every single one of them is empty, actually. Well, there's now an Emperor on the scene. <laughs> And those Vs don't want to hang around an Emperor for too long. Otherwise, that's not going to end well at all. Here come the MiGs in quite a nice formation across the map. Is Excal going to press the X key? No, the ECM's defending the MiGs. I love to see that, you know. Rare you get to see that. The MiGs being defended by the ECM's on the ground. MiGs coming in. Picks off 5 base. Should get 200 XP for that. Yep. 5 base is always a nice pick off. And I think it's fair that a 5 base has cost... Uh, 200 uh, XP because um, there's such a strong defense only costing a thousand dollars yeah that emperor is a bit of a problem it's now got the gatlin cannon on it as well we should be able to wreck all of them alone, probably. The MiG's coming in as well, though. 
Excal trying to laser lock. ECM is being kept moving for now. There's three Emperors on the scene. I'm not convinced that Excal has enough to hold it. There is a Colonel Burton in the base. And it's taking out the mix. A lot of missile defenders picked off there. This Colonel Burton is finally going to get killed. I think that's the last dozer there of Vivid. Excal is trying to hunt it. Um, Excal really is trying to probably hold out until level 3. Because as soon as you get level 3, you get an A-10. And when you get A-10, it can wreck all of that army. Or a lot of it. Especially with Crusaders and missile defenders on the ground. Drone finally picked off. So Excal is going to lose his vision. Mix coming in, picking off primarily the missile defenders, which I think is a good idea. But these emperors. Yeah, like I thought, should be able to shred through these crusaders. Crusaders are a decent tank. Actually, probably one of my favorite tanks to look at in the game. But uh, emperors are just <laughs> like, what, four times the size of a crusader? They're just beasts of tanks. And I think Vivid might have cracked Excal's defense here. Here comes the ATM we talked about. It does get one Emperor, but that's probably not enough. There's a Colonel Burton here as well, plus the Crusader. War Factory now picked off. Excal not collecting on the right anymore. Also not collecting there. Or there, actually. Artillery coming in. And yeah, I think Vivid's done it. Vet 3 Emperor. Mix coming in as well. Artillery. Some plane. Mines directly on top of the strat. Okay. I think he just knows he's won. Just doing random things. Don't think it does any more DPS. <laughs> Having the mines on top of it as well. GG, well played. Vivid extends his lead there to 3 1 with a like sublime uh, tank performance. Okay, jumping into the next one. We have the China tank for the uh, purple player up in the top, which is Excal. Map this time is Blossoming Valley. Down in the south position, we have the USA Vanilla for the green player. This is Vivid. Hmm, I wonder what strategies they're going to go for this time. Well, it's going to be a no eco from Vivid, which means two full Vs and an ambulance. And then up at the top, Excal. I reckon he might do the barracks thing again. I mean, it seemed to work well for Vivid that previous time. I mean, a barracks there and a war factory there could be good. No, Excal's going for the double war factory this time. Okay. I mean, Vivid made it work in the previous game, didn't he? The uh, barracks, bunker, one war factory. He did make it work. Is this base a little bit more wide open? Because on Dralim Desert, that kind of ridge would be on like that side of your base, wouldn't it? Or like it's rather to, your base is like kind of there and that's the ridge, isn't it? So it protects you a little bit. Is Excal taking that into account? Is that why he's doing double war factory here? Let's see. We've got a civilian running around. Vivid trying to commit war crimes. Running over the civilians with a bulldozer. Oh, 
Oh, he did it. And I feel like that was deliberate as well. Vivid. With the war crime. Vivid also might lose a V here. He is going to be extremely close. He's bringing in the reinforcement. But that V, now nah, it's dead. Oh, second time this set, really. The first V for Vivid going down way too easily. Ambulance taking a bit of damage there as well. Ambulance won't be able to repair unless it gets the battle drone above it, which typically can get shot down pretty quick by the Gats. An annoying Gat here for Excal. Unit lost. Yeah, this wolf actually is being hit continually, but uh, Excal bringing in another Gat from the right. Probably one's going to spawn from here. Not sure if Vivid can continue to press there. X-Guy's also bringing his dozer to repair that war factory. The guy in uh, Vivid's base is killed. Vivid needs to put that Chinook back. V gets locked down, and that's it. GG, well played. x successfully holds you with the victorious. double war factory strategy. Okay, jumping into the reverse of that then. We have Excal down in the south with the purple. USA Vanilla. He's going to go for the same strategy. You guessed it. No eco. And then up in the north position with the China tank for the green player, which is Vivid. So Excal is going for a forward supply. I think he's doing that so that he can protect that area because that's where his uh, units are going to be anyway. But also so he can collect from the alternate gracious to speed up his money ever so slightly, which means getting more units out quicker, which in this case helps a lot. Vivid is going for the old War Factory and Barracks strategy again. Uh, there is one difference here that probably not a lot of people take into account is that this power is way out in the open. So the first fully loaded V could literally be there in a matter of seconds and killing the power very, very quick. If that power was more located like there, it does make a big difference because when that power goes down, yeah, producing at half speed is not fun in this situation. Excal doesn't care about the power for now, though. He's going for the tank hunter and going to try to get this dozer. Dozer's locked on by the gap. Next wave from Excal is on the way, or the reinforcements, rather. One V of Excals goes really, really low. Evac from Excal. He lays the locks to the next gap. There's very few units out for Vivid. Oh, that's a mistake from Excal. He's rallied his next... Uh... Is that waypointed over there? It probably was waypointed to there, but it's, uh, it's a mistake. As long as those... this army is alive, though, still okay, I think. There is a troop crawler out now from Vivid. That does spice things up a little bit because now all these missile defenders will get cleared relatively quick. x only on one V, but it is vetted. He's bringing in another one, but it only has three MDs inside of it. Vivid replacing his power that he's bound to lose in the next few seconds. Vivid has been defeated. Yeah, a lot of these games are quick, but that's exactly what they're meant to be. They're meant to be quick. And, uh, yeah, we're trying to basically have a look whilst we're going at what strategies is uh, the tank pulling off in order to beat the no-eco. 
Okay, jumping into the next one, we've got Eminent Victory. Down in the south, we have the USA Vanilla for the player that is purple, which is Excal. Up in the north position, we have the China Tank for the green player, which is Vivid. I think it's, uh, it's not a bad idea to practice things like this because no eco only come... If you're doing a best of 13 set against someone, let's say you're playing against Big Size or Fargo or whatever, there might only be one game in there where you're required to do a no eco, where you're required to play as a tank and where you're required to play as the USA. So if you've just spammed a set 13 games against uh, either Excal or Vivid and it's all fresh in your mind, the micro, the muscle memory in your hands and the things you need to do and where you need to be looking... Um, then that obviously that'll massively help you and it might actually get you a 2-0 win in the middle of that set against one of those players. So I think it is good to spam and practice uh, specific matchups over and over again. Um, yeah, there's a few things to think about. One is that where these dozers are going and the fact that they go over here, try and build a Patriot, which then forces the opposing player to, to make uh, tank hunters or outposts to stop the dozers building a Patriot. And the other thing is... When a gat sneaks around and is killing your Chinooks, it's sometimes more important to ignore the Chinooks in your base and focus on the micro of the Vs. You would never normally say that. You always say, watch your harvesters. You always want to watch your economy. But in this situation, it sometimes doesn't matter if you lose your Chinooks, but as long as you keep your V blob alive, then. Uh, that's what helps you win. Excal's not loading up his next V yet. Probably will do now. One of the things when you micro in uh, two armies at the same time here is from, when he moves from there to there, he knows he's got a few seconds of safe time. So he moves from there to there. Nothing Vivid can do to kill his army in that time. So that's when he flicks back to his base. And that's when he loads up this, uh, this next V and then starts pressing into the base. Yeah, so far I'm trying to think about the tank wins. Um, Vivid obviously did this strategy before and won with this amount of tank hunters. Excal just won with a double war factory before. This army's getting weakened a little bit by these uh, fully loaded Vs. I think it's also very important in this matchup for the tank to get two perfect supplies. Oh, Excal's mistake there. He loses a V. Yeah, one slight lapse in concentration, and that is it. And yeah, that's very, very quick. Wow, three minutes and 30 to stop Excal's uh, no eco. GG, well played there too, Vivid. Okay, jumping into the next one. I think we watched this in the wrong order, just slightly. I think um, Excal, first of all, played the US. No, sorry. Yeah, first of all, played the US. But we're watching him. This these games on imminent victory in a slightly wrong order, but it doesn't matter. It's all the same uh, same replays. Um, so up in the north, we have the purple China tank for the player that is Excal. And then down in the south position, we have the USA vanilla in the green. This is Vivid. That barracks looks a bit funky because a lot of it has disappeared, uh, has disappeared inside of the uh, snow by the looks of things.
Okay, so Vivid's opting for attacking this left hand side. Excal has gone for the double war factory. Vivid loses his dozer, but he is uh, sending his other dozer around the other side. Let's see if he gets the Patriot up or not. Vivid controlling a few things at the same time here. This army. This V. The dozer's waypointed around as a gap made its way over into the base, though. Has Vivid seen this? I don't think so. Has now. Might still lose the Chinook, though. They were choosing to move the Chinooks out of the way. I think if you can move your Chinooks without um, having to pay attention to your army. Let's say your army's moved over there somewhere safe. Then okay, maybe try and save your Chinooks if you can. But if it, if it risks you losing the V, I would just ignore your Chinooks sometimes. Just focus on the micro Fargo style. <laughs> Okay, so one supply down, this war factory over on the left might be the next target. Yeah, the Noriko from Vivid doing pretty well, as you would imagine. A Crusader locked onto this gap. Those gets picked off. V does not get disabled by the ECM and Excal has been defeated. Another quick win there for Vivid pulling off the no eco. GG. And well played. Okay, so moving through this set very, very quickly. I think it's the fastest uh, eight games between Excal and Vivid probably on record. Down in the south position, the China tank with the purple. This is Excal. Up in the north position with the USA Vanilla in the green. This is Vivid. So, Excal going for what looks like two supplies, two war factories. I think on these maps where the supplies are wider apart, it favors the US more so because the the tank can't really do a barracks and try and bunker off this side. Because if the tank enters need to get over to this side to defend this side, then it's just so long of a distance to get over there. So, I think on these larger maps like this, I think it favors... Well, it limits the tank more, let's say. Let's put it that way. What used to be a thing as well is... People used to wait for their two full Vs to become full and an ambulance and then push out across the map. Nowadays, you're always seeing the first full V, then the ambulance later on, and then the next V when it's ready. I think it's so this first V can start doing damage and put the tank on the back foot straight away. And ideally, you're trying to pick off the trucks as well, rather than let him build up a little bit. You're trying to at least get one or two trucks is the ultimate goal for that first full V, I think. Or at least picking off um, a gat and an outpost, whatever you can. And then uh, the second V will join as well. If you wanted to balance this in a future balance patch and stop the no eco from even being a thing, because some people will say it's massively imbalanced, even though the tank has had a few wins here, I think um, one thing you could do, you could give Gats a slightly bigger range, just even like even if it was like two percent, it might help. You could also make the tank into a tank cheaper. You could make him maybe move a little bit quicker. Uh, oh, Excal has been defeated that quick. Oh, the other dozer has been hunted. Yeah, you see, I, I just think these wider maps. I think if you were trying to balance it, another thing you could do is consider putting speaker towers on war factories. So any units near the war factory get automatically healed. I think that could be a good change. You're trying to basically boost defense without 
Im impacting the balance of the rest of the game. It's a bit like a Rubik's Cube. You change one bit, it affects the rest. But I think if you boosted, like, putting a power, um, a propaganda on a war factory, or you made bunkers cheaper, or you could put more guys inside of a bunker, these kind of things are like defensive boosts, and it could help stop a no-eco without messing up the rest of the balance of the game. Okay, jumping into the next one. Let's see if Vivid is able to do anything better here with a tank on Yelling Avalanche. Down in the south position with the China tank in the green. This is Vivid. And up in the north position with the USA Vanilla in the purple, this is Excal. So, Vivid has opted for a forward supply, one war factory, one barrack strat. Excal sending his dozer forward to try and get a crush. TNT gets planted on the dozer. Excal's going to try and suicide the dozer on the trucks. It's probably as perfect as you can get it there, actually. Vivid's going to need to move them trucks. He does, but he's suffered damage on both of them. So that dozer has got something done. If you don't care about it anyway, it has got something done. There's actually three trucks there for Vivid. Very interesting. These tiny little differences. V goes down though. Not perfect from Excal, but he is uh, camping this position now with the missile defenders. He's killing those tank enters as well, and I'm sure the next V will be on the way to back it up soon. Barracks now getting hit. I think Vivid's got retaliation on because that gap keeps going to attack. Yeah, he's got retaliation on. So re retaliation just means if your unit gets attacked, it will fight back and it will chase a little bit as well. I don't think it will chase all the way across the map, but it will chase like in its area. And also, it seems as well, certain units, I think it's like, um, is it just USA and China when you're like, if you're behind a war factory or behind the barracks and that gets attacked, then your units will also fight back and defend the barracks or the war factory. I don't know exactly which buildings it is and which factions, but yeah. Seem to happen on the gap there with the barracks at least. So the power of Vivid now is going to go down. He's not started building it already. He just frozen the towel. GG. I suppose he is up, he is up a few, though. No? It's still going to go 6 4. So still advantage Vivid, but I feel like he's very hard there on that yelling avalanche. Yeah, just just going back to that yelling avalanche, and maybe also you could look at this one as well. When when you've got two supplies on a map like this, and the supplies are very far apart, I don't think it promotes good games. I mean, maybe in like GLA Mirrors and some other stuff, maybe you can still have good games. But I, I just think from watching many, many thousands of replays, it tends to be the better maps nowadays tend to have three supplies quite in good uh, proximity and maybe even, an, uh, maybe even an oil by you as well. As soon as you start putting supplies quite far apart, it just gives... Just gives more advantages to buggies, buggy wars, which are which are obviously uh, boring in GLA mirrors, but also uh, just big blobs of Vs just running around, killing everything on large, wi wide open spaces with flat ground. That's where they succeed. When you start introducing features like mountains and buildings and little ridges and stuff like that, that's when it gets more um, more interesting and more defendable against these lamer strategies. So yeah, if this is the best of 13, which I believe it is, Vivid's only one away from a victory now, so just needs to win either this one or the reverse. He's playing the harder one first, which is the tank. So 
First of all, V from Excal only gets one tank hunter, really, but it did weaken the other one. And killing those tank hunters is probably good because then it means your uh, dozers can get in and build a Patriot. I don't think we've even seen one completed Patriot this uh, whole set, which is a bit unusual. I would have thought we would see one. There's a Patriot going up at the top, and I don't think Vivid's going to be there in time to stop it, unless that outpost goes immediately there, which it is doing. Some good pickoffs here from Excal. Nah, he's not gone to it. Vivid, that is a mistake. Those trucks now are going to be harassed for the foreseeable future. Could be another quick one here. Because all of this army is getting uh, slaughtered as well. It's about the only time in Zero when a Patriot missile regular is actually useful. <laughs> Literally the only time you see it. There is a gas sneaking around the back, but this is one of them opportunities where... As Excala, I don't even think, look at your Chinooks, just let them die, because you've already won the match with what's here. The only thing that can make you lose the match is the Miss Micro on these Vs now. Excal does move his Chinooks out of the way. Oh, that was close. Splash damage could have killed that. But yeah, this is what wins the game. Moving them Chinooks had you no impact. GG. Well played. Excal gets himself a uh, slightly closer score at 6 5 4 Vivid. Wow. One unit destroyed. <laughs> okay, jumping into the next one. This is uh, Desolate District once again. But this time it's Vivid with the USA Vanilla in the green down to the bottom left. Then up in the top right, we've got the China tank for the purple. Which is Excal. So Excal is going for the two supplies, double war factory. Again, like I mentioned before, the supplies, because they're they're not insanely far apart, maybe not as far as on Yelling, Yelling Avalanche, but because they're quite far. Um, I think it doesn't give tank much option. It has to pretty much go for the two war factories, perhaps. Those feet getting quite a lot of damage done. Vivid has brought a dozer in. No Patriot missile built just yet. This dozer is helping tank some of the damage there. Still no Patriot from Vivid. I think he's prioritizing getting that second full V out, which he is doing. Could start building that Patriot now. Excal having to send that outpost back. Which then gives a bit more opportunity for these Vs to get things done. They've been taking a bit of damage, especially on that ambulance, which is moving pretty slow now. Dozer does get stopped. Vivid loses one V. Remember, Excal needs to win that, uh, win this one if he's to stay in the set. So a couple of missile defenders here for Vivid. His laser locked on the outposts. Vivid continues roaming around, but his V. Not sure if that could completely full. Oh, it is full. Now, Abilene is still a little bit low, though. Needs to keep it in safety. There's a Crusader on the way here as well. Now camp in the War Factory. The 
still could be anyone's game. It all comes down to the micro here, which is the whole point of this set, I believe. More and more Vs here for Vivid. Excal is slowly getting picked apart, but that Crusader finally gets picked off for Vivid. It's quite a lot of tanking to see now for Excal. War Factory's going to get hit. Excal thought about going around the back for a second. He's going to send his tank hunters to fight these Vs. The Vs could pick off the Dozer here or just stick with the War Factory. Nice micro again from Vivid. Keeping everything alive so far, but the V does go low. But just escapes, yeah. War Factory down, though. Excal now building a prop. He's still collecting on uh, four trucks in total. But Vivid is going to be allowed an opening here to pick off these trucks. Excal is prioritizing defending his main base. He saw this V coming in. Thought his dozer was probably going to die. So prioritizes that. But Vivid's coming in from this side. Vivid is just acting relentless. I'm not sure that the tank can do anything here. We've seen the tank lose twice on this uh, map now. If Excal loses here too. Can Excal squeeze an ECM out with this army? That will change things a lot. It's not to be seen yet. Power's not back online yet. ECM is now out. If he's going to make a run for it, that ECM is going to lock onto a V. ECM gets picked off. It depends if he's queued up another one or not. Oh, he has queued up another one, okay. But these Vs are very full, and as soon as that ECM locks on, it's uh, missile defending scattering ability is no longer in play as soon as it locks on, so... And I think there's only one ECM now, and that's... There's nothing else queued up. That's it. 75% HP. Yeah, Vivid's bringing more missile defenders across the map. Just walking them across the map. Is he going to trap himself now in the back here? x losing all of his trucks. x doesn't know really where to go. He's moving in now. Trying to trap Vivid in the back. Vivid does not care. He's just going to hit the power. Howard does a bit of damage to the Vs. The Dozer is picked off. Excalit is on the verge of losing this no eco set. Wolf actually picked off. And I think that's it now because if Vivid just made two Crusaders, he could just win the game. But never mind these now. Uh, no Crusaders in sight yet. But yeah, Vivid has won that, I think. Because Excal only has four gas, one ECM out. Vivid could just literally keep picking off the buildings and running away as soon as Excal goes to defend it. And that is it. Shortest set you've ever seen between Excal and Vivid. About an hour long. 7-5 there in the end. I know they've played a uh, quite a few other sets between each other. But they are more normal sets. Not just this specializing in USA versus Tank. No Eco. But I thought I'd cast this one at least when I had a, an hour spare today. To uh, just get a whole set out. But yeah, like I say, uh, I tend to not do full sets nowadays. It just takes so many hours to put together and uh, commentate on. I can play like four free-for-alls or I can w commentate on one set. So uh, yeah, I usually opt for the free-for-alls. But here today we had a, a good display of what no eco USA versus Tank is like. GG well played. Let me know your comments down below. And have you got any other strategies you think Tank can pull off here? I think it's very limited. Zero hours is not the most complex game in the world. I think it is very limited. But let us know if you've got a funky uh, strategy in the comments, maybe go Helix or something crazy like that. And uh, we'll, we'll see your comments down below. GG, I'll see you in the next one.